with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being private to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? The subject under which we will study on today is entitled, When Satan Fills Your Heart. In Acts chapter 5 and verse 3, Peter asked Ananias, Why hath Satan filled thine heart? This question is very important to the Christian who reads and understands Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20 reads, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Ananias was a believer. Ananias, according to Acts chapter 4 and verse 32 through Acts chapter 5 and verse 1, is a member of the body. He is a member of the church of Christ. He is a Christian. And when a person becomes a believer, a Christian, a member of the body, a member of the church of Christ, as we just read in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20, that person has Christ living in them. That person lives by faith in the Son of God. And the Son of God is significant more than anyone else because the Son of God loves the Christian. The Son of God loves the world. The Son of God gave himself for the Christian. The Son of God gave himself for the world. Even though Ananias was a believer, even though Ananias was a Christian, the Holy Spirit, this is not Peter. This is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit guided Peter to say that Satan had filled your heart. Oh, I want you to think about that now. Paul says, I'm crucified with Christ. Are y'all with me? No longer I that live, but Christ lives where? In me. He says that of a Christian. Then the Holy Spirit comes back and asks a Christian, why? You've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer you who live. It's Christ that lives in you. You live by the faith in the Son of God, who loved you and gave his life. But you feel, Satan has filled your heart. Why? Why has Satan filled your heart? Well, that's a question. That's a question we've got to deal with today. Are y'all with me? Yeah. 
Now the phrase, fill thy heart, in the original language, means to be emboldened. E-M-B-O-L-D-E-N-E-D, emboldened which means to be inspired. It means to be encouraged. It means to be motivated to act a certain way. Now the Holy Spirit identifies who did the emboldening. The one who inspired Ananias. The one who encouraged Ananias. The one who motivated Ananias. Who was he? He was Satan. When you are inspired, when you are encouraged, when you are motivated, you have a choice to accept or reject. Ananias was not possessed. Ananias was not overpowered. Ananias was not conquered. Ananias was emboldened. Ananias had a choice. We choose what inspires us. We choose what encourages us. We choose what motivates us. Are y'all with me? Ananias had permitted satanic thinking to enter into his heart. And it's interesting. This passage is interesting that because Peter... It's God's instru instrument now. It's, it's the Holy Spirit guiding Peter to ask the question. But if you remember Peter's tenure with Jesus, Peter had a similar experience. Are y'all with me? In Mark chapter 8 and verse 33, the Bible says that Peter actually rebuked Jesus for explaining that his death and his resurrection was to come. Listen to Mark chapter 8 and verse number 31 through 33. The Bible says, and he began to teach them, talking about Jesus, that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed. And after three days rise again and he spake that saying openly and Peter saying Peter in Acts chapter 5 took him and began to rebuke him but when he had turned about and looked on his disciples he rebuked Peter saying get thee behind me Satan Jesus called Peter Satan. Peter was completely sincere, but also Peter was 100% in error and 100% wrong. Don't ever think that your sincerity substitutes for the truth just because you are sincere just because your heart is in it doesn't make it right i remember years ago brother in the church one of the one of, one of the most terrible feelings for the church is to find out one of your brothers all plastered all over the news one of your brothers is arrested you come to church and churches is uh, assembled, and the brother that's arrested is not there. And everybody knows about it. You know, some of us are not going to say anything, and some of us are going to talk. <sighs> that's the truth. Don't hold nothing back. So I had the opportunity to talk to the brother. And I said, you know, what happened? Well, he got, he got arrested for settling drugs. And so he said, he said, man, I got laid off my job. There, had, there, was, a, there was a plant in uh, 
in, in Brookhaven, there was a plant. You see these poles out here that, that's just in the ground. And uh, these poles are treated. That's why they're dark colored. They're, they're treated. And uh, he worked at that plant. And he got laid off. And he said, Brother Frazier, I looked for a job and I couldn't find one. They paid me. Wife, children, they're all members of the church. Wife, children. Uh, and I couldn't find no job that's going to pay me enough to take care of my family. And so I resorted to doing that. And he, that's tough, isn't it? That's really tough. I got I to gotta bring some money. So he went the wrong way. So he, he, he meant good, but he did the what? He did the wrong thing. So you could be going the wrong way. And feel good about it too. Don't ever don't 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 make that mistake. None of us, from the pulpit to the back door, don't make that mistake. You can you can feel good about it. It can look good and it can be wrong. And so Peter, Peter was one hundred percent wrong, and Peter was in error. Now listen to what Jesus. Uh, says to Peter. See, Peter, he could have asked Peter, well, Peter, why has Satan filled thine heart? Okay? See, he could ask Peter the same question, but listen to what Jesus, he gives us, he calls Peter Satan, and he gives us the reason why he calls Peter Satan. Are y'all with me? Now, here's Peter. He's an apostle. He's going to preach the first gospel sermon. Are y'all with me? But Jesus calls him Satan for a reason. Watch what he says. He says, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of man. Are y'all hearing that? This is the reason why I'm calling you Satan, Peter, because you think more of what man says. You think more of what man wants to do. You think more of what man is doing than you think about what God says and what God wants to do and what God is doing. Are y'all with me? In Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20, a person chooses to be crucified with Christ. Acts chapter 2 and verse 41, the Bible says, Then they that gladly received the word. Those 3,000 souls were not pushed into baptism. They were not made to be baptized. The Bible says they gladly received the word, which means that they made a choice. Christ living in a Christian by choice. Are y'all with me? This episode teaches us that a Christian can change his choice or her choice. Are y'all with me? Understand, church, that while we are singing, everybody will be happy over there. While we're singing, I'll be somewhere listening and yield not to temptation. When service is over, we can change our choice. This is Sunday. This is the Lord's day, but this is also a day in which we make choices. You're going to make choices today just like you're going to make on Monday. You're not on vacation in making choices today. You're going to make choices today. And Ananias changed at some point. I don't know when he changed, but at some point he changed his choice. 
And as a result of changing his choice, he became inspired. He became encouraged. He became motivated by what man thinks, says, and does. We ought to be inspired. We ought to be motivated. We ought to be uh, encouraged by the word of God. Are y'all with me? We, we are, when, it, when it comes down to Bible, that, that's what amazes me about us. Why is it that we don't want Bible study? We are learning what thus saith the Lord. We know that the word of God is what guides us. And when we have the opportunity to study it, we will walk away. Man, I'd ride up on the side of you walking down the street. I got a brand new acro. Boy, it smells new. Now let the wonder down that smells new. You can, have y'all ever have y'all ever open the door and the new aroma comes out? Man, it's clean. I said, bro. Paree walking. I said, Paree, where you going? I'm going down to the store. Bro, get on in. I'll take you to the store. Paree said, no, that's all right. I said, Paree, you tired? Yeah, I'm tired. You in pain? Yeah, I'm in pain. You want to get to the store? Yeah, I want to get to the store. Well, come on, let me get you a ride. No, that's all right, bro. That's okay. That sounds crazy, doesn't it? Marie, am I, am, I, am I your brother? Yeah, you're my brother. Do you love me like your brother? Yeah, I love you like your brother. We going to heaven together? Yeah, we going to heaven together. Well, come on, let me give you a ride. No, nah, that's okay. That's all right. Uh, well, how do we do that? How do we do that? That's, that's a question that we have to ask. See, we'll change our mind. We'll get inspired, encouraged, and motivated. And Jesus says it. You savor us not. You don't get inspired. You don't get encouraged. You don't get motivated. We act like something new got to be happening all the time for us to be inspired, motivated. Let me tell you one thing. When the, when the chicken comes out of the grease, I'm inspired. Are y'all with me? Man, I've been eating chicken all my life. And I ain't got tired of it yet. Are y'all with me? Is there, is there some new chicken? No, it ain't no new chicken. If you go down to sing on and they got a new chicken, what is that new chicken? You go down to that kind of, oh, that chicken got four legs. Oh, no, 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 no. You got four drumsticks now. You won't touch it. I ain't never seen no chicken like that. Huh? Man. <laughs> Don't touch it. When we come down to the church, we got to have something new all the time. I was listening to one preacher, and he, he said in his congregation, he said, brother, you preach the same sermon every Sunday. He said, when y'all learn that one, I'm going to move on to another one. <laughs> y'all didn't learn that one yet. Isn't that something? I'm not going to do that. I, you know, that's, that's a little deep, you know. But you see what he's saying. You see his point. You want something new, and you haven't grasped what you got in your hand. So, so Ananias had permitted Satan to change his way of thinking. Now, now, now that we have uh, this phrase, why had Satan filled that heart under our belt, it's imperative that we develop our knowledge so that when Satan approaches us to embolden us, and what does embolden mean? Anybody remember? 
encourage, inspire, and motivate. See, Satan is coming to embold you. He 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 probably he, he probably been at you already this morning. Huh? He was probably after you in here. When I was standing at the door, some of y'all looked over there and said, what are you standing at the door for? He's supposed to be sitting up in the pulpit. Hmm? We watch everything. I'm not trying to get in nobody's business, but I'm just trying to show you how he comes to you. I'm going to show you that in just a few moments. He, he's, he, he comes to you. He seeks to embolden. He, in, he seeks to inspire, encourage, and motivate us to make decisions other than what God wants us. And we've got to be able to recognize his strategy and know that it's him and what he's doing. And when we know what it's, we know it's him, we know what it's doing, then we decide to say yes to God and no to him. And we're going to go over to 1 John chapter 2 and verse 14. I wish we could go through all of this, but time, maybe we'll get to it in Bible class, but, but the, 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 this, this whole series of verses is so connected to what we're talking about. There, uh, we're going to see that the Holy Spirit gives us knowledge on how to recognize Satan's approach to embolden us so that we can stop saying no to God and start saying yes to him. Watch the text. I have written to you, fathers, because you are strong. And the word of God abides in you. And you have overcome the wicked one. Excuse me. I have written to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong. And the word of God abides in you. And you have overcome the wicked one. <laughs> Fathers. Okay, he says, you have known him who is from the beginning. See, he says, the fathers, you have known him. Young men, you are strong. Fathers have had some experience with God. And because of their experience with God, they are locked in on God because of their experience. Are y'all with me? Not going anywhere. Because I've had experience. I know him from experience. See, he says, he says, he says, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I've ex you have experience with God. So you've seen how God has brought you through. Are y'all with me? So there's a brother Sidney. Brother Sidney, you look at Brother Sidney, and Brother Sidney says, well, uh, I'm going to be at church. Brother Sidney, I'll come pick up. No, no, I'm going to ride Metro. Are y'all with me? Because I've had experience with God. I know how God wants to see me make every effort I can myself to get to worship. It's not that Sidney don't want me to come pick him up. It's not that he won't accept a ride. But he says, I've had experience with God, and I know that God wants to see me doing everything I can do right where I am to serve him. But the young man is strong. Young man is strong. 
I'm gonna do it. See, 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 see the fathers, he he's he's moving, he ain't moving sometimes as swift and as fast as the young man, but he gets the job done. Because experience has taught him how to get things done. But the young man, he's strong. He got a lot to say. He moving here and he moving there. He can absorb a lot. He's learning. He's watching every move. He says, I'm writing to you, young man, because you're strong. You can learn the word of God. So let me tell you something. Don't, don't try to wait until you're older. To learn. See, you, see, your mind is sharp right now. See, Parker and Landon, they, they absorb stuff like a sponge. Huh? They can hear one time and give it back to you. So you got to tell me about ten times before I can give it back to you. But them, they give it to you right then. Because they're young. They're sharp. They're strong. Are y'all with me? And in the church, we need that balance. We need some men who are seasoned, and we need some men who are strong. That's why the children of Israel fail, because the young men say, oh, come on, let's put our strength in here. They didn't want to listen to the wisdom of the younger, of the older men. You need some balance in the church. Oh, Brother Jordan is old, and he, he, he need to go ahead and sit down. No, he don't. He don't need to sit down. Are y'all with me? He may, need, he may not be able to do what he did 50 years ago, but he's got some years in. He knows some things by experience that can balance out the strength of the young man. Are y'all with me? That's why we need camaraderie, brothers. That's why we need camaraderie because if you take a guy that's been married 60 years, he can tell you how to weather some storms and your marriage of five years. Are y'all with me? I'm here to tell you, you don't get it in five years. Huh? You can tell your wife and your husband, I love you all you want to. I'm not against any of that. But in five years, you don't know what it takes to stay together for life. You just want to stay together for life. It takes some years to know that. And that's why we need some camaraderie among brothers to have some balance between the old and the young. Are y'all with me? Young men, be, be willing to sit down and, and listen. Brother Reed says something, listen to him. Are y'all with me? Oh, Brother Reed, it ain't like that no more. That's what you think. Uh-huh. That's what you took me a while. You know, mama used to tell me people don't change. Yeah, see, you know, people still not. See, you got your good say, got that iPhone 14, man. You got that. You're looking at that, man. People still lying on iPhone 14. They, they lying on the iPhone 14. Hmm? They lying on the iPhone 14. The phone is new, but the lies been here. All the time. So don't just think you just got you got something new that everything has changed. People are still the same. Are y'all with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now, now watch this. He says, he says, verse 15, do not love the world or the things in the world. Do not you remember Jesus says, Peter. You savor us not the things of God, but the things of man. The Holy Spirit comes along. John was there. John, John is guided by the Holy Spirit. He said, do not love the world, nor the things in the world. For if any man loves the world, the love of, of the Father is not in him. You remember Jesus says, no man can serve two masters. You either love the one and hate the other. Hold to one and despise the other. No man can serve both God and mammon. Holy Spirit says if anyone loves the world the love of the Father is not in him. 
He says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Now, now, the, the New International Version translates the pride of life as boasting of what he has and does. Pride of life is when you boast about what you have and what you do. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Now, in our study, Ananias does not demonstrate the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. But what about the pride of life? Oh, let's look at Ananias. Ananias has property. Ananias has possessions that others do not have. See, if Ananias was like the other folk, then he would be standing in line waiting for some gifts from the apostles. But he wasn't standing in line waiting for gifts from the apostles. He was bringing gifts so that the blessings could go to those who were standing in line. See, Ananias was in a different line, church. Are y'all with me? He had possessions that others didn't have, and he had recognition. See, people knew Ananias. Ananias also has the connection with other people. See, if you, if you get a, if you, if you got a, 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 a piece of property, and you, you want to sell it, you go list it. If you don't know nobody, huh? You go list it. You're going to put it out there and advertise it, hoping that somebody will come. Ananias has some connections. Ananias knows some folk, no doubt, he can call and say, I got a piece of property for sale. Do you want to buy it? Are y'all with me? Ananias not only has connection with other people, but Ananias has property that has some value. He's got some property that folk want to buy. Are y'all with me? Now, if I tell you I've got about 10 acres uh, down uh, I-10, uh, right on the other side of uh, the Sabine River, uh, about uh, 30 miles east, right off the swamp, uh, it's about uh, 10 acres out there. Are y'all with me? And it ain't nothing out there. But my 10 acres and Brother Christ's 10 acres. Are y'all with me? You got a house on it now. It's swamp. We can't build no house on it. It's got some timber on it. No, it ain't got no timber on it because it's swamp. Are y'all with me? And I'm selling it for a million dollars. I'm not interested. <laughs> Are y'all with me? I don't have any property that's valuable enough for you to want to buy. Are y'all with But Ananias did. Ananias did. Ananias left and came back. Are y'all with me? He had something valuable enough for folk to buy. And not only did he have property that was valuable enough for individuals to buy, Ananias had property that was for sale immediately. That's a difference. So I brought phrase, I want it now. Wait a minute, I got to get it ready. I got to get the paperwork. I, I got to do something to it. It'll be ready and such a, Ananias had it ready. Right then. I got a question for you. Ananias, no doubt, has done a tremendous job in building an inventory of property and building a reputation for buying and selling. 
Is it possible that Ananias entertains the thought that I could lose on this deal? I'm going to sell my property. I'm going to give all the money to the apostles. I'm not going to have any money for myself. And in my business world, see, I, I have worked to build an inventory. I have a reputation of buying and selling. And my business is to profit. But if I give all of the money to the apostles, I have no money for myself. Is it possible that Ananias entertains the thought that it, if my constituents find out that I have sold a piece of property and I've given all the money away, is it possible they say, but well, that ain't a nice, that wasn't a very wise thing to do. I don't think I'm going to fool with Ananias no more because uh, Ananias is doing some crazy things here. I think I'm going to do business with Ananias. That's going to make me look kind of bad. Are y'all with me? Is it possible that Ananias entertains the thought that he had never done this before? I've never sold a piece of property and gave all the proceeds away. My business have thrived off of me, making a good profit off of property and showing the profitability of myself. I've never done that before. In all my days of business, you, the Lord is asking me, and see, all of this is going on in Ananias' head. He's at the assembly. He's shaking hands with the brothers and sisters. Are y'all with me? He's listening to the apostles. Uh, are are y'all with me? He sees the needy people. He sees their need. But all of this stuff is going. Anybody know anything about that? Yeah, you listening to the sermon and you singing the songs and a whole lot of stuff is going around and around in your head. Some of it is for God and some of it is not. Are y'all with me? Oh, that's the truth. And so, so, yes, I think it's possible that Ananias was loving the world from the standpoint that he had the pride of life. The pride of life is a weakness we all succumb to at times. Satan tempts us with the desire to be our own God. Are y'all with me? Satan tempts us uh, with uh, the desire to be our own God by stroking our ego. Oh, that's a lot of money, Ananias. You know what you could do with that money? Don't, don't, don't you have some, some things that you would do if you had a, 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 sum, a, a good sum of money more than what you have now? And, and, and when you have those thoughts, Satan will come along and stroke your ego. You know what you're supposed to do. That's why some of us are in financial trouble right now. Because we've had opportunities and Satan have come along and stroked our ego. Yes, he has. And, and then when, when you find out uh, that, that uh, Satan uh, gave you the okie doke Huh? Talking about I shouldn't have did that. Huh? Have you ever said that? Oh, I'm, I'm not. You don't have to answer. You don't, don't, don't answer. I'm just, you know, just teaching the lesson. But yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll do that to us. He'll stroke us. That's why you gotta be careful who you call your friends. Now, child, I tell you what I do. 
you would, you do that. Uh-huh. And then you can, I thought about it. That sounds pretty good until you do it. And then you don't want to talk to them no more. But they didn't make you do it. Ain't no need of you getting mad at them. <laughs> That's right, you made that choice. They didn't make you do anything. You getting mad with folks. That's why, that, that's, that's, that's what's wrong with us and our relationships now. We're getting mad because we did something. And then we're going to accuse another person of me. They didn't make you do nothing. Hmm? They didn't make you do anything. You, you, you chose. Oh, that girl don't act right. Ain't nobody made you marry her. Ain't nobody made you marry her. I don't know what's wrong with her. Ain't nobody made you marry her. That was the decision that you, and that's the first thing you've got to accept. Your decision. Accept your decision. Have you, have you ever had folk to come to you and they just give you this long story? about what everybody did and 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 uh when they get through and you see what they done to me and they won't admit nothing that they do they won't admit anything don't be like that church don't be like that own up to your stuff God knows we not, we're not perfect. He knows we're not perfect. You, ain't, you don't have to go to God and act like you're perfect. He knows you better than you know yourself. And the beautiful thing about it is he says, listen, come on to me. Come to me, all ye that labor and are of, listen to this, heavy laden. Bring your loads to me. Bring your loads to me. You don't have to come to him perfect. Trying to come to church and everything is all right. You can't worship God. Uh, you, you need to be in heaven and everything is all right in and of yourself. You're not going to have everything right in and of yourself on this side. The, the, the first Corinthians 15 says we shall all be changed. We're going to be changed from corruptible to incorruptible. We hadn't changed yet. Are y'all with me? Man, I don't want no heart attack, but I can't control that. Are y'all with me? I can take all the vitamins I want to, but if this body fails, it's going to fail. Are y'all with me? I can't control that. It's just like if I, I can't control sin in the world. I'm living in a sinful world. I take it to God. So, 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 Satan strokes our ego. He did it to Eve. I, I, want, I, just, I want to show you Eve, Eve and Jesus. He did it to Eve. I know y'all can, I know you can relate to Eve. He, he, Eve, Eve, Eve desired to be wiser, to be wiser. They, the devil says, God only knows that the day you eat of this fruit, you'll be as God's knowing, knowing good and evil. And she started looking at that fruit. She wanted to be wiser. In her pride of life, she rejected, listen to this, she rejected the Lord's right. Now listen to this. She rejected the Lord's right to rule over her. I want you to take that home. See, God has a right to rule over you. He has a right to rule. He made the tree. He made the earth. He made them. He has the right to rule. You run around here talking about, hey, you, you don't tell me what to do. 
He has the right to rule over you. He made you. You remember, you remember, uh, you know, the, the, the story about the, about the man, you know, and God and, and, and uh, uh, man say he can make a, he can make a man just like God. So God, God said, okay, you go ahead. He said, I'm going to get something to God. I said, oh, wait a minute. Don't get none of this dirt. I made this dirt. You got to get your own dirt. Are y'all with me? See, none of us can get our own dirt. Huh? We using God's dirt. You can call it your God and all you want to, but you using God's dirt. Huh? You can say, I'm watering my plants all you want to, but you are using God's water. Are y'all with me? He has the right to rule over you. And choose. And instead, she wanted to make the decisions. He had already made the decision. Don't eat of it. Don't touch it lest you die. He made the decision. He made the decision. See, you, you, don't touch it. See, your parents tell you something. They're they, they making a decision for you. Oh, I want to decide for myself. They done made the decision for you. So don't touch it. Don't do it. I want to do it myself. Huh? You are questioning your parents' right to root. We all did it. It wasn't right, but we did it. Young people coming up now, don't question your parents' right to rule. And even when you're, I begin when I get grown, I do what I want to do. Don't live like that. Don't live like that. Remember what your parents told you because it'll keep you out of trouble. It'll, it'll take you uh, away from some things that you won't have to suffer through if you just listen to them. So she rejected God's right to rule over her. And as Christians, we can play into Satan's hands also. When we hold out on full surrender, what are we holding out for? What a, you know, you, you, the Lord has given us our worship time. He's given us how we ought to worship him. He's given us how we ought to live for him. He's promised us if we will live for him, he will bless us. What are we holding back for? Well, I don't like Brother Fraser. Brother Fraser ain't got no control over your blessings, man. Are y'all with me? I don't like the way Brother Fraser preached. He preached too long. It's 1132 already. Don't listen. Don't, don't hold back on your full surrender to the Lord. That's what we're doing. We're playing Satan's hand by holding back. And we'll do stuff and we'll, and we'll run back to God and, and we'll ask God to forgive us. Don't play that game. Just surrender to him. I got a question for you. I'm going to end. I'm going to close on this. I got to give this to you. We tend to give more consideration to pleasing other people than to pleasing God. I got a question. I got a question for you. Are we allowing the world to dictate our commitment to God? You say, I'm committed to God. But are you allowing the world to dictate? Let me give you an example. When we meet to plan, our ministry and our worship. This is from the, for the pulpit to the back door. I'm not excluding myself. This is deep. Okay. Do we plan to put God first? Or are we working him into our schedule? Are we working him in? Do we put him first? Or are we working him in? Do we like to have veto power? Veto power meaning just in case God wants 
something from me that I don't want to do, I can veto. Do we exercise veto power? See, see, church, listen. When you're working God in, you are not savoring the things of God. You are savoring the things of man. I want us to think about that. Did you hear what I said? I said, I want us. I'm including myself in that as well. I want us to think about that. You don't work God in. You don't work God in. Well, Brother Frazier, you just trying to uh, uh, position us so that whenever you call us, we'll come running. No. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not trying to do that. Don't, don't let Satan stroke your ego like that. Because I live in the same world you live in. Are y'all with me? So I understand when you have stuff to do. That's why I'm saying from the pulpit to the back door. But when we cannot, when the majority of us cannot get together and get done what we need to get done in the church, we move to the category of people who just work God in. For years, I've heard individuals say, well, I can't come to Bible class because I got this going on. I got that going on. Well, Bible class is the most important thing because it keeps you connected with God. And if you're too busy to put some gas in your car, you're going to be sitting on the side of the road. Huh? Your light comes on, the, light, the car is telling you, you need to get some gas. The car didn't told you that. Oh, I ain't got time for that. It's going to stop on you. It's going to stop on you. Are y'all with me? And then you keep on putting God off. I don't have time. I ain't got time for Bible class. Worship is at 10 o'clock. Listen. Well, Brother Fred, what time wish going to be next Sunday? 10 o'clock. It's 10 o'clock every Sunday. Recurring date. If you use your calendar on your phone, you put it under recurring date. Every Sunday. The weather's bad. We ain't canceling. Are y'all with me? The brothers don't, you know, don't come to the meeting talking about, you know, where we have something good. Can we can We don't cancel church. We don't cancel worship. Are y'all with me? We worship God every first day of the week. And so we don't work God in. If I, if I ain't doing nothing, I'll be down there. You don't tell God that. I, when I go, you know, uh, when I go to the doctor, you know, I don't want to hear no nurse talking about, well, uh, uh, if he can, you know, if he, if he got to open and he can see, uh, that's terrible. That's a terrible thing to say to a patient. He ain't got time to see me. I'm looking for me another doctor. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Go to Walmart to get your oil changed. And ain't nobody in the stalls. Workers standing around, and you just sit stand there for 15 minutes. Hmm? Give me my keys. Give me my keys. If you ain't got time, I got to go. Are y'all with me? How you think God is? Well, when I, when I, I, when I get an opening, Lord, I'll see about you. Huh? But phrase it ain't like that. Okay. All right. Well, that's, you know, that's, if, if that's the way you see it. Are y'all with me? If, that, if that's the way you see it. See? 
But you, but you know how that works, though, don't you? So you, you do somebody like that, and they see it, they're, oh, you know, it ain't like that. Yeah, it is. Yes, it is. It's that way. And we need to change that. See, Ananias, let me, let me tell you something. I, I, I know we, I, I, see, I, we hadn't talked about his line and, and keep, keep, we're going to talk about that tonight. I just want to give you a little bit of that because, you know, because I know y'all waiting on it. I've been working on this, you know, the pride of life and so forth, but that's why he lied. See, the, the, the Satan filled his heart came before the lie. Are y'all with me? Now watch the core value. I will be honest and truthful in my single most important relationship with God. Well, I'm going to be honest and truthful in my single most important relationship with God. Because if I'm not living by faith, I'm not going to be honest. Are y'all with me? If it's not the Lord living in me, if it's Satan is filling my heart, I'm going to do stuff like what Ananias did. And so some of us, we want to just not do it. I want to find a way not to do it. I'm not going to lie. I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. I'm not going to give part. I ain't giving at all. You're trying to find ways of not doing a deed. And the Holy Spirit is teaching you that the deed came from your heart. And the core value is designed to help us straighten out our heart. And I know you're tired of hearing core value. I hear you. Core value. Core. Brother Fraser, core. we talk about core values. All, listen, you live by core values. And Ananias did what he did because of his core values. Are y'all with me? Now, you said, now, now, church, listen. Listen, you, you can show me anything you want to show me. But Ananias teaches us that no matter how you present yourself, in church, the Lord can see your heart. He may have had the best looking gift that they had ever had. Oh, you, 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 you y'all, y'all gave, y'all gave old Barnabas some accolades. Wait, wait till I get up there. Let me show you how to really give. He may have brought the best gift, a gift that surpassed all the other gifts. But no matter what you bring, the Lord sees your heart. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that to condemn anybody. I don't want you to walk away conde feeling condemned. I want you to walk away being aware. Be aware. Be aware that the old devil, he tries to make wrong look right. He presents himself as an angel of light. Be aware that he only brings you destruction. He's going to attack your natural weaknesses. Be aware that he is designing to distract you. He's going to take all your emotions, your passions, and your appetites and use them against you. Beware. But here's something else you also ought to be aware of. That God has given you a shield of faith. Yes, he has put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the wiles of the devil. Put on that shield of faith that's able to quench all the fiery darts of the devil. Do you have a shield of faith today? Do you have your shield of faith on? You know the devil is coming after you. You know he's throwing stuff at you. He know he wants to deter you, distract you, turn you away. Do you have your shield on? You ought to leave here with your shield of faith on so that you can quench all the fear of darts of the devil. And remember Galatians 2 and verse 20, I am crucified. 
with Christ. Why has Satan filled your heart? Well, that question shouldn't apply to us because we are crucified with Christ. No longer I that lives. It is Christ lives in me. Life I live in the flesh I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we come to you this morning giving you honor and praise. Lord, we've heard your word. We know that Satan stalks us. We ask you to open our eyes today so we can see all of the strategies that he uses and know that he is not for you. He's against you. He's not for us. He's against us. Give us the strength to say yes to you always and no to him always. Strengthen us, Father. Fill us with your spirit. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. If you're here this morning and you know that you need a better relationship with God, you ought to have the courage. Take that courage that Ananias used to stand as he did and stand for Jesus. Does anybody have the courage this morning to stand and say, I want to say yes to God in every facet of my life. I don't want to be overcome with the pride of life. I don't want to love this world. I want to love God. I want the love of the Father in me. I don't want to be emboldened by the devil. I want to be emboldened by God. I want to be inspired, encouraged, motivated by God. Does anybody have the courage to do that? You got to stop looking at other folk. Because the pride of life will keep you looking at other folk. You got to start looking at God. Will you come? If you're not a Christian, this is your time to become a Christian. Believe Jesus died for your sins. He was buried. He rose again the third day. The blood is shed at Calvary. Purchase the church of God, the church of Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, Mark 16, 15, and 16. Acts 20, verse 28. Believe the gospel to the point that you will repent. You'll make up in your mind that God is right about everything. Acts 2 and verse 38. Confess Jesus. Acts 8, 37. That he is the Christ, the son of the living God. We'll baptize you for the remission of your sins. Acts 2 and verse 38. The Lord will add you to his church. Acts 2 and verse 47, he'll add you to the church of Christ. Romans 16 and verse 16. You're a member of the body. You're a Christian. You can see Ananias. Ananias was a Christian. And he walked away. When he walked away, I don't know. But if you're a Christian this morning and you've walked away, you can come back by repentance, confession, and prayer. This is your opportunity. Will you come? Come right now as we stand and sing. Without you, Lord, without you, Lord, I just cannot make it. Without you, Lord, no. Cannot make it. Listen now. There was a time, Lord, I was living in sin. Then along came Jesus. Yes.
yes, he did. And he took me in. He died on the cross for my sins. That's why I will love him. I love him. I love him until the end without you, Lord. Without you, Lord. Oh, without you, Lord. I just cannot make it. Without you, Lord. Without you, Lord. Oh, without you, Lord. Lord, I just cannot make it. Without you, Lord. Oh, without you, Lord, without you, Lord, I just cannot make